I'd like you to imagine a race car. Now, in a race car, there's a lot going on, including where the engine is and where the driver is. And if there's a fire or explosion in the engine area, we want to protect the driver as much as we can from the negative impact of the flames and explosions and so forth. And to do that, there's a firewall that goes between the two. Well, in networks and security, we use the concept and technology of a firewall in several places. And in this nugget, in this video, I'd like to chat with you about a few uses and locations where we can use a firewall. So starting out with, <laughs> based on our topology here, an obvious location for a firewall would be on our network. So here we have a network-based firewall. Now this could be a physical device, or it could be what's known as a virtualized machine or a VM. But whether it's physical or a virtual device, a firewall can provide many features to protect one part of our network, one part of our resources from another. So in this topology, this could be considered our trusted or the stuff that we're trying to protect and everything out here to the right could be considered untrusted or less trusted. And one element of a firewall is similar to a policy I heard many, many years ago regarding drugs, and that was just say, no. And we might ask the firewall, well, what are you saying no to? And the firewall could say, I say no to anything that's trying to come in from a less trusted location, like from the internet or from the branch office. If it's trying to come in, I'm just going to say no and drop the traffic. However, if we need to make exceptions to that, we can, what I refer to as poke little holes in the firewall to allow just the types of traffic that we want to allow through our network. And perhaps that might include certain types of network traffic from the branch office going to our headquarters location, or perhaps certain types of traffic from internet users if that traffic is destined to our servers. But generally speaking, the firewall is just going to say no. And that attitude of just saying no might cause a little bit of a problem for a user such as Bob here at Computer2 if Bob is going out to the internet. So one strategy we could use with a firewall is to allow traffic, if it's coming from our internal location, we'll allow it to go ahead and go out. So if Bob is going to his favorite server on the internet, and then the favorite server on the internet is then going to respond back to him, we have yet another problem. And that is the firewall saying, no, I'm not going to allow that reply coming back from that server to come back in. And so that makes Bob really, really sad. So to solve that problem of Bob not being able to get his response back from his server, most firewalls use a feature called stateful. And what stateful really means is we're, we want the firewall to remember Bob and that he went out. So stateful is remembering the state or the conversation that Bob started as he went out to that internet resource. And by remembering the state, when that internet resource replies back, when it's coming back in, if the reply traffic is perfect, it's lined up with exactly what the firewall expected as a response to Bob's request, and it will allow that reply traffic to come back to Bob, which makes Bob now happy. I'll put a little happy face there for Bob. So when someone refers to a stateful firewall, all they're referring to is a firewall that can remember the initial requests that went through the firewall, like Bob going out to the internet, and the firewall dynamically allowing that return traffic to come back because it remembers that initial request from Bob and the reply is perfect. And when it comes to features as far as what we want the firewall to be able to do for us, I'm reminded of a Billy Idol song that went something like, more, 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 with something about a, a rebel yell mixed into that. And some of the additional features that a firewall can provide for us would include things such as URL filtering. We can control from a company level, we can control the websites that Bob is able to get to. So if Bob is trying to go to site one or site two or site three, because the traffic has to go through the firewall and the firewall has a policy about what's allowed and what's not allowed, the firewall can say yes to certain websites in certain categories and no to others. We also may have very sensitive data and personal information at our organization that we don't want to have leaked out. Things like social security numbers and credit card numbers and so forth. And another feature that firewalls can offer is called DLP. Now DLP is an acronym for Data Loss Prevention. So if the firewall, as it's looking at all the traffic going through it, if it sees stuff that looks like credit card numbers or social security numbers, it can just say no and drop that traffic to prevent it from being exfiltrated, which is a fancy way of saying leaked out of the network. Another fancy feature that many firewalls have the ability to do is analyze all the traffic that's going through them and perform intrusion prevention and detection services. And because the firewall is between the two networks, if the firewall sees something that looks like an attack or malicious content, whether it's virus related or malware related, 
or certain types of attacks that are trying to get in to harm our internal networks, the firewall can just say no and drop that traffic and then send an alert to indicate the event has just taken place. And as the firewalls get fancier and fancier, there is a term for it, NGFW, for next generation da -da -da -da, firewall. So a next generation firewall has the ability to do some of these advanced features. Another term that's often used is UTM, which stands for Unified Threat Management, which can incorporate many features into one system. Another benefit of some of these next generation firewalls is that they can have intelligence and learn information from the cloud. And an example of using threat intelligence from a service in the cloud would be if there's a new, a new attack that's coming from some country across the sea, and that attack has been identified by other sensors and other firewalls, that information regarding the block of IP addresses or the type of attack that it is can be fed dynamically to our firewall, and that way the firewall with that threat intelligence, if it sees traffic coming from those source addresses, from those source locations, can start to drop it, or at least put those on higher suspicion as far as packets before letting them go through the network. Now, one other aspect regarding firewalls is that a lot of companies have their servers in the cloud. So if our server's out here, how do we get a firewall of some type between Bob the user, who's also on the internet, who's accessing our server, which is on the internet in the cloud? And the answer to that is we can use cloud services for our firewalls. We can use Web Application Firewalls, WAF, that's the acronym there. And it would go something like this. So if Bob is the user and this is our server, we can go ahead and I'll put in green here with a C, the cloud provider, and we can have our traffic from Bob go to the cloud provider who's doing the web application firewall or the filtering services. And then that cloud provider can then forward the request, if it's approved and allowed, over to our server, which can then go ahead and respond back to Bob. And with the firewall, it's once again putting something between. In this case, it's putting the traffic between Bob and the server going through a web application firewall, making sure the traffic is OK. And one other aspect about firewalls is that we can also have firewalls on local machines. And those are sometimes referred to as personal firewalls. And the attitude of a personal firewall could be, I'm not allowing any traffic in to the system, says the software running as a personal firewall on this computer, unless it's in response to a request. So once again, if Bob is going out to a web server and the reply comes back in, the personal firewall can say, yep, I'm expecting that. Where at the same time, if there is traffic from an attacker or somebody else is trying to come into Bob's computer, the personal firewall on that computer can say, you know what, I wasn't expecting your call, not even gonna respond, and it drops the traffic. In this video, we've taken a look at a few concepts regarding firewalls. And for more training on firewalls and vendor-specific firewalls like Checkpoint and Cisco and Palo Alto, check out our videos over at CBT Nuggets. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.